Salaam. Today, by the grace of Allah, and we pray that he will guide us, protect us, and have mercy on us. Increase us in knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. To cleanse our hearts and our minds. Make our intentions good and noble. Today, inshallah, the Yom El Juma, the day of gathering, Juma. Today's khutbah is from chapter 92 of the Quran, entitled Al-Layla, the night, the night. As you know, we've been touching on each chapter of the Quran each week. And last week, Qutbah was from chapter 91, entitled Shams, the sun. And so now 92, that's 92 weeks. So we thank Allah and we pray that Allah will guide us through each chapter, that he will be pleased with our intentions and our efforts and our work. And we pray that we have benefited and we are benefiting from touching on each chapter of the Quran. Now this week's chapter 92, Layla, the night, comes after the sun, Shams. And it is a very early Meccan surah, this surah here, this chapter, 92. And it consists of 21 verses, 21 ayat, 21 verses. And it begins, or Allah, Allah begins because this is the word of Allah, the Quran is the word of Allah. And when we finish reading it, oftentimes you'll hear people say, Sadaqallahu Azim. And you'll hear the translation generally speaking as surely Allah speaks the truth. It's in a general sense after we finish reading it. But if you listen to that, you say, Sadaqa, which we know, Sadaqa. Sitkin is truth. Abu Bakr Sadiq. He was Abu Bakr the truthful, truthful one. So you have Sadaqallahu Adim. And Adim means mighty. When we go into Ruku and put our hands on our knees, we say Subhana Rabbil Adim. Glory to our Lord the Mighty. So when you finish reading the Quran, you, you say Sadaqallahu Adim. And generally speaking, they say, surely Allah speaks the truth. But you can hear the word, Sadaqallahu Azim. Which really is saying, Allah's truth is mighty. But it's loosely saying, surely Allah speaks the truth. But Sadaqallahu Azim is Allah's Sadaqa, his, 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 his uh, sitkin, his truth, is mighty. So mighty, Allah says, in Hashar 59, that had he revealed his Quran on a mountain, that's mighty, right? It would bring that mountain down and cause that mountain to be shattered. Min lahi, out of the fear of Allah. So, the Quran, just wanted to share that with us. We pray that Allah will guide us through the Quran, increase us in knowledge and wisdom. And this chapter 92 begins by drawing our attention to the night. Of course, it's called Layla. So just by the very name of it, Allah wants us to think about night. Layla, the night, 
it begins by drawing our attention tonight and how it covers, how it covers, like a blanket, like clothing, etc. So it begins the first ayat, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, wa layli ita yaqsha, by the night as it covers. But he wants us to think of night, it's clear because it begins that way. And so it stands to reason that one of the first things that Allah wants us to think about in going into this chapter is the night. Now we know as Muslims, the most important night in the history of mankind was the night of power, Laylatul Qadr, when the Quran was beginning, the first five ayat was revealed to Muhammad the Prophet Sallallahu in the month of Ramadan while he was on Mount Hira in the cave around the last ten nights, uh, night or so. But this surah after Shams is called Layla, the night. And it begins as we said, while Layli either yaksha by the night as it covers. Now oftentimes, uh, and just thinking of this, when we prepare to go to sleep, we get under a cover. So it's the night as it covers. So at night, when we go to bed, in most cases we get under some kind of cover. Covering. Muhammad the Prophet Sallallahu used to do the same thing, as we know. Because Allah says in the Quran in 73 and 1, and that's the name of the title, Muzamil, he says, Ya ayyahal Muzamil, Muzamilu, all thou wrapped up in your garments. They say, arise and pray, etc., etc. So it brings that to mind to think of the night, but the night as a covering, as a covering. So night, as we know, is associated with covering, because we cover at night to sleep, and rest. It is connected to the spiritual activity because at night when we rest, our physical body is fixed for the most part. It's fixed, it's not active. But our spirit, our mind is somehow active. You may dream or etc. But our body is resting. So at night, we can see also at night, because that's the name of this sword, we're talking at night. We can see at night in the sky things that we can't see during the day. So at night we can see things in the sky, in the spiritual region. That we cannot, but we can't necessarily see on the earth clearly. Without these street lights, when it's dark, we can't see much on the physical plane. That's why they have the street lights, etc. And headlights on the cars. But at night, we can see in the spiritual realm, we can see in the heavens real good. We can see the star formations, the Milky Way, the zodiacs, etc. We can see upstairs very good at night but it's day now right and it's bright outside but you look upstairs in the sky you see nothing but clouds all blue but we know there's something else there right but you can't see it now so the sun reveals what's on the physical plane but at night the moon and the star reveals what's in the spiritual plane so he's drawing our attention tonight, something different. And we say, man, the sun is bright, it's a beautiful, bright day. You can see everything out here. But you look upstairs in the sky, you only see blue. But we know there's more up there. And once that is rolled back, you say, wow, now we see what it was hiding. And that's what night, it's the benefit of night. Muhammad the Prophet, Sallallahu it is reported that he had an ascension 
he was taken from Mecca to Jerusalem. And on his night journey from Mecca to Jerusalem, he was taken up to the seven heavens. But it happened not in the day. It happened at night. So we're touching on night because that's the name of this surah. Allah draws our attention to the night. So in, in surah Bani Israel, as uh, I believe it's 17, Allah says this. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Subhanalladhi asura bi-abdihi layla min al-masjid al-harami illa masjid al-aqsa alladhi barakna hawlahu لِنُورِيَاهُ مِنْ أَيَاتِنَا إِنَّهُ هُوَ سَمِيءُ الْبَسِيرِ Glory be to your Lord who took his servant by night from the Kaaba, the masjid, the sacred masjid to the father's masjid which area is sacred that we may show him our signs. We also know, and we mentioned it last week that Ibrahim, in his search for the, in his growth, and being taught by Allah, and showing his sign, began his growth at night. Allah says that when the night covered him over, when the night covered him over, he looked at the star. So this chapter tonight, Allah wants us to think of night, Layla. It's obvious because there's a whole surah entitled Layla. Now, inshallah, we want to go ahead and begin reading this surah. And then come back to some things. But keep in mind, the night as a covering... Allah says in Surah 78, وَجَأَلْنَا لَيْلَ لِبَاسًا That we have made the night as a libas, as a clothing, as a clothing, as a garment covering. Libasin is garment, is covering. Allah says in Baqarah, He says, we have given you, children of Adam, we have given you clothing, Libasin. We have given you clothing to cover your shame and so you may look nice. He says, but the best dress is the dress of righteousness. Libasin. Use the same word. So it's interesting that Allah lets us know also that the night as a covering is also like a clothing, a covering. So for some reason Allah begins this chapter wanting us to look at the night but to see it as a covering. So inshallah we'll Go to the chapter. Chapter 92. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Walili ida yaksha. By the night as it covers. And by the day in his glory as it reveals. And what in the mystery they'll put of the creation of the male and the female. Stop here on this third ayat for a minute. And he created Zakara, the male, and the 
female. You read all the translations and you will see that exactly. But listen to the word for male. What thakara. Thakara. After the salat or any time we do, thakara, right? Thakara. Allah says, لِذَكَرِ اللَّهُ أَكْبَرَ Thinking on Allah is the greatest. So we do thicker. That's thinking, reminding, remembering. But here the same root, the same word, thakara means the male. What thakara will own that. He created the male and the female. But the word thakara meaning thinking, remember. Remembering, thinking, reflecting, etc. Reminding. Which is to say to us as males that we should be thinkers, brothers. That instinctively we should think before we act. Not just move on emotion, but think. For surely thinking profits. Remember. Remind. Use the mind. It's the same word for thinking. Means the male. That you think. Reason. You are instinctively a thinker. But here is put next to the female. Who's a thinker as well. When my talaka thakara wal unthe. What are you to think about? And to remember. Remember the female, brother. Remember the female. When you're working, when you're busy over man's long run, working, building, etc., whatever he's doing, don't forget the female. Remember that she's a human being just like you. Think on that. Remember that she has goals and objectives just like we do. Remember, think over the fact that she's a creation from Allah, not to bring the man down, but to help the man. Remember, she has a soul also. Think of that. Be reminded that she can accomplish great things just like we can. Think on the women. Don't forget the female. In your haste, in your work, in your building of the world. That's what Quran is saying to us. Think. You're a thinker, but think about the female as well. Say she has goals, objectives, mind, same creation. Allah says he made us from one soul, nefs and wahidah. So a man talaka dhakara wal unthah. And as we pointed out last week, Allah did this and does this in shams. He gives us a picture of the outside first. To draw us to the inside. And that's how we, Shams is, the sewer before this. Allah says, well, Shamsi wa duha, by the sun and its bright light, by the moon as it follows her, right? By the day and the night, etc., right? By the sky and its built, by the earth and its expansion, for El and, and uh, by the soul and its balance. He goes from there and points to us. The same here, Allah says, by the night as it covers and by the day as it reveals, and he gives us something about ourselves. And the creation of the male and the female. In that surely, surely your endeavors your striving are diverse. They are different. That Allah created us, male and female, created us as human beings, but Allah says, Inna, surely, set ye kum that your efforts in life, your striving, your endeavors in life varies. They are different. You have a goal, brother. You have a goal, brother. You have a goal, sister. 
all of our objectives, our striving is different. And as a human being, you have that. No one can corral you and say, everybody have to do this. No, you want to be an electrician. You strive for that. You want to be a builder, an educator, an imam, a president, a leader. That's your striving. That's your calling. That's your goal. So Allah says that your striving is different. That you all have a goal to which he turns you. And you are to race towards that goal. So Allah says he created the male and the female. But he says surely your efforts, your striving are diverse. You will have different goals different objectives, different plans. That's natural in the human being. But Allah reveals that so that no one comes along with, with a one-sided mind and say, huh, everybody's supposed to be doing the same thing. And make, and make you clones or robots and thinking you have to go after the same thing. But Allah says he's made the male and the female. But he has made our efforts what we like, what we want, different. But he gives us guidance. It's so beautiful. He says, but although your efforts are diverse, have this kind of character, though. Have this kind of personality. Keep this in mind. Him who gives and is righteous and have God conscious who is aware of his Lord. And who stand upon good, what is excellent. You hear? What sadaka? What sadaka? Who is truthful? Who stands upon that which is truthful? Bil husna, hasana, beautiful, excellent, hasan, has, hasana. Who stand upon that which is good and excellent? Now you have your diverse goals. See how our Quran touches on everything. Your goals are different, but here's a standard for you. Whatever you're going after. Whatever you're going after, be one who gives and who tries to be righteous and who has Allah in mind, right? And stand upon what's good. Be the husna, sadaka. That's why in, in the, uh, we know during Ramadan we try to play the, play the sadaka fitta before the salat to confirm what you've been doing. The sadaka truth, that's what you stand upon. Stand upon that which is good which is excellent. And Muhammad the Prophet Sallallahu he was asked a question, he said, he was asked a question, it's saying, the same thing, Hassan, it's saying. Uh, say, what is, what is it saying? Uh, this Hassan, the same thing, this, this excellent. What is it saying? And he said, it is to conduct your life as if you see Allah right in front of you. He say, but although you know you don't see him, know that he sees you. So that's, that's this hasana, that's this excellence. So those who try to stand upon that, you have your goals, different goals. But those who do that, Allah says, فَسَنُّ يَسِّرُهُ لِلْيُسْرَى He will make easy for you, or he will make he will smooth or facilitate you, give you what you need. The road to ease. He will make easy for you to achieve. Same word twice. That you're striving. But if you give and keep Allah in mind, try to be righteous, and you stand upon what's good, then Allah says, and we, and we heard in the surah, uh, in the al-usri yusra, 
that after difficulty comes ease. Well, here's the word ease. Here's the word ease. He said, Fesenu yusri, Fesenu yesiruhu, pardon me, little yusra. He will make easy for you to reach the road of ease. He will move blocks out of your way. He won't make it difficult for you. He will facilitate you. That's what it means to give you what you need to achieve your goal. So although he says diverse, here's the standard. If you be this way, you can get help in achieving what you're going after from Allah. But then Allah says, and remember he said that what you strive is diverse. Okay, now he says this. But as for him who is selfish and considers himself self-sufficient, independent, I don't need nobody, I don't need a lot, selfish and independent who considers himself that way, and deny hasana, deny excellence, deny beauty, deny goodness, lie on goodness, deny it, I deny it, I reject it. Who deny hasana, who deny excellence, who deny goodness. Allah says, Fesenu yesi ruhu lil usra, that he will make easy for them the road to difficulty. Now we, we read the Surah expansion, he says, Inna al usri yusra. After the difficulty comes ease. Well Allah says, those who are selfish, those who are selfish, and those who consider themselves self-sufficient, don't need nobody, don't need Allah, and think they're God, those who do that, and those who, those who get the bad bill husna, who reject excellence, who reject goodness. Allah says, okay, the good, I'll make it easy for you to ease. He says, for them, I'll make it easy for them to run into difficulty. Allahu <laughs> Akbar. Just the reverse. And their wealth will not profit them and stop them from perishing, from failing. And Allah says, Inna alayna al huda. For surely we are the one to give the guidance. Praise be to Allah. <coughs> Allah lets us know your role, brothers and sisters, is diverse. But he gives you some advice. Gives us some advice. Be this way, be this way, and your role, your role won't, your struggle won't be as difficult. And then he says, but those who go this way, their road is going to be more difficult. And Allah says, that's why we went back, Allah says here, he pulls it right and he says, but, and remember, inna alayna lal huda. We are the one to give the guidance. That Allah will guide you in your endeavor. What you're trying to achieve. Know that your brain, your mind, your heart, all the unity, that works towards it. But the one who gives the guidance is Allah. Set your goals, try to achieve, but never forget to call on Allah. Never forget to ask Allah to help you achieve your goals. Because he is the one that can give us the knowledge, the wisdom, and facilitate it, make it possible for you to achieve your goals. That's this surah in Layla. Surely to us is the beginning and 
the end. <laughs> Praise be to Allah. To us is the end and the beginning. Meaning this. That you have the goal, right? And you start, they say the journey of a million miles began with the first step. You have an objective, you have a goal. So you have to start out, and Allah says here, we know the beginning and the end. We know where you should start from and how it's going to end up. So you want to you want to pray to Allah who, who can guide us, who knows the beginning and the end, and he can make the road easy for us. Praise be to Allah. That's what you want in the night. Leon to Gata. That's what Muhammad the Prophet Sallallahu got in the night. And Leon to Gata. He got the guidance. He got the knowledge. He got all that he needed to go from being the Prophet that night. To begin that night in Ramadan. All the way to what? The victory in the end. Praise be to Allah. Allah granted him the victory beginning that night. Knew what he was going to go through in his struggle and striving. But he also knew the end. And Muhammad the Prophet Sallallahu kept striving. Struggling through difficulty. Then he saw some ease. And that's next week, Surah. Duha, right? Your Lord has not forsaken you, nor is he displeased. You fell in the weight, Muhammad. But in the end, you're going to be all right. Praise be to Allah. And we follow Muhammad the Prophet, Sallallahu the model human being, who put before us to say, you can achieve. Here's the sunnah. Follow this way. And I leave you two things. Quran and my sunnah. You stand on that, you never go astray. We stand on that, we're going to get where we got to go, brothers and sisters. See, see, the Quran is such that as you read it, it's what's there, but it's to spark and send you. Make your mind active and go and show you other things. That's how the Muslims were able to bring the world out of darkness into light. It was the revelation of the Quran that allowed them to come out of the Arabian Peninsula to go throughout the world and look at what the Greeks had done, what the Romans, what the Romans had done, etc. But they had more insight from the Quran, and they improved upon what they had, and that brought the Europeans out of darkness into light, and stimulated the Renaissance, and caused the world to expand. It was the Quran, because it sparks its science right in the Quran, and it's designed to spark the mind and to give you insights and thoughts that you didn't have before. Mighty book, brothers and sisters. It's our book, Quran. And Muhammad the Prophet, Islam, obviously was a mighty man. Allah says, That surely we have beheld you, Muhammad, in a mighty plane. And we already read where Allah said if the Quran was revealed on a mountain, it would have brought that mountain down, right? And shattered it. Well, Muhammad was on a mountain, right? And the Quran was revealed on a man, on a mountain. But it didn't bring him down and shatter Muhammad. It raised him up and made him mightier than any human being that ever walked this earth. So it says clearly that there was something about Muhammad that was strong and mighty enough to accept and take the revelation of the Quran. Praise be to Allah. And ayat 14, is only 21 ayat. فَأَنْذَرْتُكُمْ نَارَنْتَ الْلَذَى And Muhammad says, he's told to say, that I warn you, of a fierce fire. You can move up, please, brothers, brothers, please. And then we get comfortable. <laughs> I said, make room in the assembly. So Muhammad the prophet told to say, I warn you against a fire, blazing fire. La yes la ha illa el eskar. That none will roast in this fire, 
Now we'll be consumed by this fire except the worst of them. The most wretched, the worst of them. And the worst of them are those who deny and lie about the truth and turn away. They don't just reject it, say this is not for me. They lie about it. They deny its existence and they turn away. They will be the worst of them to roast in the fire. What say you, Jenebu Hela Ekkor? But those who have the taqwa, those who have the taqwa, those who strive to be righteous, they will be kept from the fire. Now who are, who are those? Eladi Yutimele who yetezake. That's those who spend of their wealth, who give of what they have, Menele, who of their wealth, yet tezake, zekat, who gives of their wealth, that they may grow, that they may be purified. They spend their wealth, they give in sadaqa, zakat, they help the poor, they help people not to be seen. They give up their wealth, their manner, they give up their work, their wealth, yet their zakat, so they will be purified, that they will grow. And remember in last week's surah, and any who know shams, surah shams, Allah says, kat eflaha men zakaha, that you will surely, talking about the soul, it goes like this. Uh, uh, by the soul in its balance. That we have enlightened the soul to the fujur and the taqwa, the good and the bad. Then it says, Talking of the soul. That he will be successful. The, the, the Mu'evin said, Come to success. That he will be successful. That Ephraim men had Not just the book. But he who spends. He will be successful. He who spends on his soul. Now here in the sort of after that. Allah says. Those who give up their wealth. So that they will purify themselves. So that they will grow. So that they will grow. They spend their wealth. Not to be seen. But they spend it to grow, to cleanse themselves, they'll be kept from the fire. And just as we said, they're spending of them well so they can grow, not to be seen, because this next ayat says, and when they give these servants, they are not looking for Nitman, a favor or a reward from anyone that's not in their mind. They're giving out of the goodness to purify themselves, to cleanse themselves. So they're not helping, they're not giving to say, oh, give me something back in return, necessarily. They're not, they're not giving to be seen. They're not giving for a reward. If I give this, I give that back. They're giving purely for the sake of giving. Fisi bilillah. So Allah, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says of them, he says, not only do they give for that, he says, in let the God he Rambil Allah. Desiring only the face for the continent of their Lord, the Most High. So they're giving for the pleasure of Allah. They're helping the people for the pleasure of Allah. They're helping the world for the pleasure of Allah. They're giving in zakat for the pleasure of Allah. They're not looking for something in return. That's business. That's business in exchange. But there are those who have who, who striving to grow. If I can help here, if I can help there, if I can do this. It's cleansing and purifying themselves. And Allah says, Well, let's your dog. And soon they will be pleased. Soon they will be satisfied. 
So we completed that surah. We say, Sadaq Allahul Azim. And let us close the first part of the Qutbah. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatain wa fi akirati hasanatain wa kina adabina. Alhamdulillah. Rabbil Alameen. Dear believers, in our last few minutes of the Qutbah, the second part of the Qutbah, and we thank Allah we were able to get through each, get through his complete surah, the 21 verses. <clears throat> we mentioned, and this is community as well, as always, this, this side of the Qutbah. Allah says, what Thakara remember, well the woman, the female. Remember, think, brothers, sisters, Thakara, 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 Thakara. Always think. Allah created us with a mind to think and to reason, to move forward. You have a plan, you have goals, think about it. How you want to get there, etc. What life is about. Don't forget your mother, your grandmother, your wife, your sister, your children. Think. And Allah puts it together and we see it there. Think about the women. Think. Remember, they struggle like we do. Remember that they have a soul. The, the, False teachings that the, the Romans and others received saying man is born in sin and saying that Eve deceived the man and that Delilah took Samson off and all these negative images of the woman is in the, is in the world and in the, in the religion that's how it got to the world we know in Islam they, that equality is for women and we ought to remember they have a soul like us, they have goals, they have objectives, they have minds, etc., etc. And, and, and that is brought out, that is brought out, because before the revelation, there in Arabia, if they were born with a female, they would bury them alive. And Allah says in the Quran, He says, on that day, that female baby will ask, for what crime did I commit? to be buried alive. They were so chauvinistic. And Shaitan, who whispers now, then and now, he tries to give the image that Muslims are about oppressing their women. That, that, that their women can't be educated, their women can't be this, their women can't be that. And that they are, they are less than us. So they project this image, and we know that. But we know Islamically that is not the case. So we're saying that because that's what's here in the Quran. Also, community-wise, we are planning to show recognition to our women. To the women. Master Ibrahim, as you know, you probably have flies, intend to have a program, a banquet, is first women's Appreciation Banquet. And it has its theme, honoring, appreciating, celebrating the hard works, the achievements, the contributions of women. And we'll have a speaker, inshallah, to speak on and to remind not just us, but to project to the world that Muslims appreciate women. And this false idea that you have out in the world, that Muslims oppress women, women don't have a voice, etc., etc., is a lie projected by shaitan. And that is not Islam. Now, we're not, there's cultures.
two things. We know that. We're not getting into all of that. And we're not getting into your marriage and my marriage. <laughs> Males and females together in our arguments and ups and downs. We're not talking about that. <laughs> so everybody say, no, brother, no, no, no. You can't show that. Okay, you know, wife got to do better for me to do that. I'm not coming. Do my wife do better? <laughs> no. Praise be to Allah. So inshallah, that's community. That's why we're mentioning, we're mentioning that and we'll say more more afterwards. So, dear believers, that's the surah later. And Allah says in the Quran, as we close, that in the alternation, the rotation of the night and the day are signs for people of understanding. The rotation of the night, first is night, then is day, then is day, then is night. Allah doesn't just tell us that. Allah shows us that. When you look at Surah Shams, right? It says, Allah says, Wa shamsi wa duhaha. Wa kamari ida talaha. Now listen. Wa nahari ida tajalla. By the day as it reveals. So it says the day first, right? As it reveals. And then it says the night, right? Day, the night. Now you come to this surah, and how does it go? It begins by saying, By the night as it covers. And then it says, By the day as it reveals. You see, just the reverse. So he doesn't just tell us that. He shows us that in the language of the Quran. That sometime, brothers, you're going to have daylight, sister. You're going to have day, bright. You're going to be able to see and achieve. And then you're going to have a dark time where you can't see and achieve physically, but you'll be awake spiritually. There's going to be good times and bad times. Then there's times when you start out dark. But then it gets light. And we make prayer, right? It starts out dark, fedger, it's mixed. Then it gets light, right? Then at night we make the other prayer. So it's back and forth. So that's that's the message. So Allah says, in the alternation of the night and the day are signs, brothers and sisters, that you will have good times, break times, but then you'll have dark times. Then there's times that will be dark, and you think, oh, that next week saw her again, I think, do I? By the night, when it is still, <laughs> right? The law says, by the night, when it is still. Meaning this, that night, when it's just sitting there, when, you, when, it, when you're struggling and you can't see it, it's hard. It's like that night never moves. <laughs> by the night, when it is still. When you can't see in this world and make progress and you're in a difficult situation, it says, by the night when it is still. It's like it's just sitting there. It's a long night. And that's what people say, right? Time flies when you're having a good time. But when you're struggling, it's like you're in that situation forever. So Allah says, by the night when it is still. So there are times when it seems like you're going to struggle forever. But no, eventually that night is going to fade away. And the good light of truth and progress will come, inshallah. So we did the Surah Layla, and we're going to have to close. And inshallah, after Salat, we just want to say more about the upcoming banquet in June. And encourage you to support it, buy your tickets, etc., etc., etc. So we close. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatain, wa fi akirati hasanatain, wa kinadabinna, alhamdulillah.